In this video, we'll take a look at the new RAD command bar introduced in the Q3 2010 release of RAD controls for WinForms. The RAD command bar is actually designed to completely replace the old RAD tool strip control. It brings with it better support for themes and better design time support. Let's take a look at how we can set up a RAD command bar in our own applications. So as you can see, I've already created a very basic WinForms application and to get started adding a rad command bar to it all I need to do is come over here to the toolbox and drag out a rad command bar control into the main form and as you can see it's placed it at the top of the form and it contains several visual indicators that are designed to help me along in the design process for the command bar so this first segment that it's added for me if I click on it is actually called a command bar strip element and it acts as the container for the various controls I'll be adding to the command bar. And if I click this little down arrow, as you can see, it gives me the choice to select between various types of buttons, drop down lists, uh, separators, and labels. And by selecting one of these, I can add it to the command bar. So let's add a few command bar buttons to this. As you can see, it contains a default icon that acts as the visual indicator for what this button might do. Now the first question you might be asking yourself is where can you get some icons to replace this default indicator? Well, I'm glad to say that Visual Studio 2010 actually comes with a set of icons that you can use in your applications. And I'll show you where those are right now. If we open up the Windows Explorer here, I'm going to just go straight to the C drive and to Program Files x86. And I'm going to browse into the Microsoft Visual Studio 10.0 folder and then into common 7 and then as you can see here there is a Visual Studio 2010 image library folder and if we drive down into that it contains a zip file and this zip file actually contains hundreds of icons you can use inside of your applications so I've already extracted the icons I need from this library so I'm going to close out of Explorer and let's begin replacing the default icons on these buttons with the ones that I would like them to display so I'm going to select the second button, and this is going to be my open file button. So I'm going to come over here into the properties window, and I'm going to scroll up to images, and we'll just select its image property and open it. And I'm going to import a resource into the project so that it gets compiled along with the project, and I don't have to include a separate set of images with my project. So I'll just click import. I'm going to browse to my assets folder. As you can see, here are the icons that I'll be using. So I'm just going to double click the open icon and I'll click OK. And as you can see, it's replaced the default icon with that open icon. So let's replace a few more of these. So I'm going to select the third one. I'll open up its image property again. And this time I'll import the save button. And then we'll import another one. So I'm going to scroll back up to the image property once more and we'll import the undo button this time and I'll click OK. And then I'm going to add a couple more items so I'll add another command bar button real quick and then we'll scroll up to the image property once more and then I'll select it and this is going to be the redo button and then I've got quite a few buttons that I've added here so to make things easier on the user I can actually add a separator that separates the buttons based on the types of things they do into different sections. So I'll go ahead and add that. I'm going to add a couple more buttons. So these are some of the basic toolbar buttons the user will have access to in my application. As you can see, they're a little bit close together, so let's go ahead and add some formatting to them. I'm going to add some padding on either side of them to space them out a little bit. So I'll go ahead and select all of these icons and I'll scroll up to the padding property which is a common property shared among all of them. I'm going to add a little padding to the left and a little bit to the right and as you can see it's spaced out the buttons so the command bar actually looks quite a bit better by doing such a small thing. So to begin using these buttons, let's say I wanted to add some functionality to open a file. I can actually select that button come over here to the properties window and select events and this actually contains all of the events that would be common to a regular rad button that you're probably used to and if I were to add any of these other types of controls you could simply access all of their different kinds of events through the properties window as well 
So let's add one more row to the toolbar that allows the user to set the font of the application. So to add another row, I'm just simply going to click on click here to add new row. And then I'll click the plus to add a new command bar strip element. And then to this, I'm going to add three buttons. And I'll go ahead and set the images for these buttons as well. Now that the images are set up, let's add a couple drop downs that allow the user to select the font and size they would like to use. So I'm going to click on this and I will add first a command bar separator. Then I'm going to add two command bar drop down lists. So there's the first one and then the second one. And then this first drop down list is going to be for fonts. So I'm going to select it and as I was saying earlier, all of these controls are very similar to the regular RAD controls you would find here in the toolbox. So I should have access to all of the properties I need to begin adding items to this list box. So I'm going to come over here to the properties window and I'm going to scroll down to the text property and we'll just erase its default text. And then I'll scroll up to the items property. I'm going to open up this collection and let's add a few fonts that the user can choose from. So we'll add three fonts and then the first font will be Arial. The second font will be Times New Roman. And then the third font will be Verdana. And I'll click OK. And then let's also adjust this drop down list so that the user can select a font size from it. So the first thing I'm going to do is adjust the size of this list. So I'm going to scroll up to its auto size property and set that to false. And then I'll scroll down to its size property. And I'll expand this, and I'm going to set the width to 65. And then finally, again, I'll scroll down to its text property and erase the default text. And then I'll go up to the items property and expand the collection editor. And we'll add a few default sizes the user can choose from. So we'll start with 8, and then we'll go up by 2, so 10, then 12 then 14, and then 16. And I'll click OK. And then as I did earlier, I added padding to the top section. So I also need to add padding to the lower section as well, just to make it look a little bit nicer. So I'm going to select all of the controls once again. And I'll come over here to the padding property. And I'm going to pad on the left by 2, and then on the right by 2 as well. As you can see, it already looks quite a bit nicer. So now that our basic command bar has been set up, let's go ahead and take a look at the application in action. So here's our command bar. And as you can see, when I hover over items, it lets me know that there are clickable items by highlighting them. And if I click on one, as you can see, it animates the click for me. And then if I want to select a font, I can select this drop down and I'll select Arial. And if I want to select a font size, I can select this drop down and select a size. And then if, as the user, I don't need some of these options, I can actually click on the drop-down and add and remove the buttons that I don't need. So let's say I don't need the undo and redo buttons or any of the cut, copy, and paste buttons. And then if I change my mind later and I do need cut, copy, and paste, I can open this back up and re-add those buttons and they get added back in the same order that they started in. And then also, if I want to rearrange the way these different sections are set up, I can actually just click over here to the left of a section, and I can drag it up or drag it down, or I can actually switch them all together. I hope you've enjoyed learning the basics of the RAD command bar. Thanks for watching.